Welcome back. Now, from medical school to space, Dr. May Jemison is a woman we can safely say has done it all. She made history becoming the first African American woman to travel into space in 1992. Now, 30 years later, she's made it her life's mission to ensure more ordinary people get a chance to experience space too. She sat down with me during her visit to Kenya and shared why Nairobi will be the next frontier in finding future space travelers. Here is Dr. Jemison in her own words. I was very lucky that I was able to choose my parents well. <laughs> And they allowed me to maintain that enthusiasm I had by the, about the world. And I was the third of three children, and so I got to hang out with my brother and sister in their science projects. And I did go to Chicago Public Schools. I went to Chicago Public Schools in Woodlawn, which is one of those areas that people at the time were saying was depressed area. But there was something different that was happening. People were allowing you to experiment. I had some incredible teachers who helped to foster my interest. And I think that as we go along, that's what happens. I had some incredible experiences where I got to intern and do things all the way through high school. In college, I'd already decided I was going to be an engineer, so I was a major in engineering. But in high school, I had physics classes. I had um, advanced placement physics classes. There were all these things that I was able to do. And again, it was in public schools. Her schooling life was not void of challenges, being an African-American woman in the sciences. I was very comfortable with myself. Now, that doesn't mean this stuff didn't happen, because we know it happened, right? I was that kid who started out in the front of the classroom, right? I was student council president, I did real well, all those kind of things. You know, with the hands up. And sometimes the professors didn't call on me. And I may have gradually moved to the back, but I had enough confidence in myself that I wasn't leaving, right? There are things that help to um, modify that as well. So I told you that I majored in African and African American studies, and I think the reason I did that, I didn't intend to do it, but I used to take classes along with all my chemistry and engineering or whatever classes. I took classes in dance. I took classes in the politics of, you know, of sub-Saharan Africa. I took all of these classes. And at one point in time, when I started taking Swahili because I was linguistics and I thought, well, this is going to be really interesting. I got really into it. For me, it started to offset maybe some of the energy dissipation you get when you're having to prove yourself or you're having to ignore people as they act as though you don't know as much. I wasn't socialized enough that I should care so much when somebody said I couldn't do something or somebody doubted me because I still had that one. Yeah, I could push the envelope in the world. And push the envelope she did, daring to achieve her dream on flying beyond Earth's stratosphere. So it's, I grew up during the Apollo era. Mark, we passed T minus 30, T minus 25 seconds and counting and Apollo 13 is go. T minus 20. So I always assumed I'd go into space. I didn't think I was going to have to be an astronaut. This is not semantics. I just thought by the time I got old enough to go into space, we'd just be going up there to work, right? You wouldn't have to be the crew member to go up. Um, growing up, I always thought that it was foolish that they didn't have women astronauts. I had learned a lot about uh, black history and African history and the things that we have been doing forever, right? And where some of the first sciences and mathematics and things came from. So I never thought that it was not within me. So I assumed I'd go into space. By the time I applied to NASA, I had been around the block a number of times. What does that mean? I'd gone to medical school. So then I came and I worked in West Africa and Sierra Leone and Liberia for two and a half years as the Area Peace Corps medical officer, which uh, was really a, a very interesting, challenging job. So by the time I got there, I wasn't afraid to apply. I figured I had enough skills and it's just give it a go. What, what can they say? They can say no, but they can't say yes if you don't apply, can they? 
Though the dream of space flight had already been planted in Dr. Jemison's mind, the representation of Nichelle Nichols on the popular sci-fi television series Star Trek fueled her belief that she too belonged among the stars. Hailing frequencies open, sir. Nichols' character, Lieutenant Uhura, in the 1960s series, challenged racial stereotypes at the time. I should say that Nichelle became one of my best and closest friends after I joined uh, the astronaut corps. And, you know, losing her this year was just very, very difficult. What was amazing about her, yes, her character was important, right? In Star Trek, yes, seeing that was important. But what became important for me later on was just the woman herself and how much dignity, how much confidence, how much um, self-determination she had. And you know, those things transfer. Sometimes we think, oh, a person has to be in the exact same field I'm in in order to get something from it. Uh Uh-uh. So sometimes it's not about people doing exactly what you do or even looking exactly like you look. It's about making that connection and being able to use the energy that's there. Well, at T-minus six seconds, uh, main engine was starting, and uh, shortly at T-zero, we started the 50th mission of the space shuttle. Dr. Jemison turned art into reality on September 12, 1992, when she and six other astronauts went into space on the shuttle Endeavour, making history as the first African-American woman in space. People often say, hey, what happened to you with, when you were in space? Uh, sometimes they say, you look down at Earth and that's everything. Were you afraid? I wasn't afraid because one of the things that I recognized when I was in space, that we're all a part of this greater universe. I have as much right to be in this universe as any speck of stardust. We all do, and we all have this place where we can help determine what happens in the future. Uh, The experiment went very well. Uh, The results now, the investigators are out at Ames Research Center working uh, busily on things. That was Dr. Jemison speaking about the experiments she carried out while in space. She knew her presence had to count for much more than being the first African-American woman in space. What difference it makes that you're there? And how do you use your place at whatever table you're at? Now, what difference it made if I was an astronaut and I acted like everyone else and I, I didn't use my unique experiences? So having worked in developing countries, having been a physician, having grown up on the south side of Chicago, what do I bring to the table? If I act like just everyone else, what difference? You know, there's a first woman of color in the world to go into space. What difference does that make if I don't use what I learned, uh, even in the space program, with things I do afterwards? Her space flight earned her an appearance on an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. She played Lieutenant Palmer in the episode Second Chances, the first actual astronaut to do so. Since that experience, Dr. Jemison took up lecturing in universities as well as went on to write her first book in 2001, titled Find Where the Wind Goes, a children's book about her life. Beyond the countless awards she has won and boards she sits on, Dr. Jemison wants to ensure she makes a mark on the future of space travel. Currently, she leads the 100-year Starship Project through the United States Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA. The project works to make sure human space travel to another star is possible within the next 100 years. With 100-year Starship, that inclusion is because I firmly believe the only way we can make the best use of space technologies, space capabilities, is having the full range of human experiences, skills, and talent involved. The newest initiative is a symposium called Nexus 2023, a hybrid space gathering designed for people from all walks of life. Nexus is a program that we started under 100-year Starship 
to make sure that we get that full public involvement and explanation. Who is it for? It's for artists. It's for people who are creative. It's for folks who like a challenge. It's for dancers. It's for uh, textile. It's for astrophysicists. It's for astronomers. It's for life scientists. It's for teachers. It's for uh, people who are technical, um, skilled labor. It's the whole range of things. Why? Because this impacts all of us. It is the first of its kind program outside of the United States that will take place in Nairobi between January 31st and February 4th next year. What is going to happen during this conference? We're actually going to have a program around women and space. And it will be a workshop. We're working with an organization called Makers out of the U.S., which um, and they hold programs around the world. But they focus in on women and the programs they do, um, making it clear that African women have a major role to play in space exploration. We want to make these things accessible to people. We're gonna. We're actually uh, sponsoring a writing contest, which we do. Frequently, it's called the Canopus Awards for Excellence in Interstellar Writing, and it's whether fiction and nonfiction. The year's theme is Who Owns Space? At a time when the world's richest individuals are battling it out for a piece of space travel, Dr. Jemison wants to democratize the experience and make it accessible to anyone who has an interest in the worlds beyond our own. I'm going to just tell you to come as you are. Because my job, my job and my team's job, but I take it upon myself, is that by the time you walk out, you're going to have some different thoughts. That's whether if you're an astrophysicist or whether you um, are a school teacher or you're a business person or you're just someone who loves sci-fi. By the time you leave, you're going to have a different perception and you want to join a community. So just come as you are. You don't have to change anything. Just know that you're going to help to change us and we're going to help to change you in a positive way. Victoria Rubadiri, Citizen TV. All right. Now from matters.